Hi, I'm Einar Tangen, and this is Reality Check. China's Central Economic Work Conference issued recommendations for 2023. Don't worry about the official sounding name. It's just part of China's economic plumbing system. It takes the five-year plan and basically adjusts it to the realities facing the country, economically and socially. It prepares the groundwork for the annual March government work report, which will have more details about specific policies. This has been the strength of China's economic success. Step-by-step -step consensus-based planning that moves from concepts to goals to implementation, evaluation, and as needed, adjustments. So, as we approach the new year, the conference report is a good window to see where things are going, globally, domestically, in the world's most consequential economy. Where are we today? Over the last four years, China has been the target of a trade war, a tech war, a new cold war, and blamed for a regional conflict in Ukraine. In addition, China and the world have been dealing with a global pandemic, massive debt increases, growing economic inequalities, climate change, rampant inflation and logistics problems due to a combination of the issues above. It hasn't helped that the U.S. Has, has panicked. The Fed's extreme fiscal and monetary tightening has forced other countries to follow suit, pushing the world towards a global economic recession. What? In the name of America first. Unfortunately, this is the same thinking that puts China at the center of America's negative narrative. China is responsible for everything wrong with the world. From the pandemic to America's declining competitiveness to the conflict in Ukraine and the global economic decline. In America and the UK in particular, the repeated narrative about China is that it has been on the verge of collapse for the last 25 years. Well, the reality is, over the last 25 years, China has become the world's second largest economy. By growing the world's largest middle class, and eradicating extreme poverty. A perfect example of this is, three weeks ago, the narrative was China was about to collapse because it hadn't opened up. Today, the narrative is China is about to collapse because it opened up. Neither reflects the reality that China's pandemic policies have allowed it the luxury of opening its society and economy when it was safer to do so. The problem for Washington is China's success is a challenge to the notion that only liberal democratic capitalism is a legitimate social, political, and economic model. So it's not that China is in danger of failing, just that there are those who want it to fail. Why? because they don't want to have to examine their assumptions or the justifications they've used to start wars, interfere in the affairs of other governments, and enrich themselves. If, for instance, the basics of Western colonial actions over the last 350 years were simply about using first religion and then ideology to obtain wealth and power by force, they would be exposed as nothing more hypocritical narcissists. Why this long preamble before discussing China's 2023 economic outlook? Because what happens in 2023 is connected to what came before. So let's get into the specifics of 2023, and then you may understand the point I am driving at. As I said, China held its annual work conference where it discussed the policies necessary to implement the current five-year plan goals. The highlights of the report were about how to stabilize economic and social growth. On the positive side, the report was clear about encouraging private enterprises, micro, small, and medium-sized business entities, real estate, consumption, needed tech development, efficient production, digital economy, and a stable renminbi. 
On the negative side, there was a desire to discourage speculative bets that don't create jobs or economic impact and rein in local government debt. The tools proposed using targeted expansionist fiscal monetary programs and policies, but, or in other words, supporting the economy where they think it's needed. Quote, we need to encourage and support the private sector economy and private enterprise in terms of policy and public opinion, unquote. That's the statement that was released in their report. The hope is that changes to how China responds to the pandemic will usher in a strong economic V-shaped rebound, which is a priority. As the economic data for November showed retail sales down 5.9%, Industrial production grew, but only at 2.2%, less than half of October's growth. Investment in the property sector, which accounts for as much as 30% of China's GDP, plunged by 9.8% in the first 11 months of the year. Property sales by value plummeted by more than 26%. Unemployment rose to 5.7%, a six-month high. Given everyone is working off the same data, you would expect a somewhat close alignment of forecasts, but you'd be wrong. Basically, there are three camps. The developed nations and their institutions recently revived their 2023 China growth estimates downward. World Bank down to 4.3%, IMF down to 4.4%, Asian Development Bank down 4.2%, a fairly tight set of economic target groupings. Then we have the private sector's 2023 predictions, all revised upwards. The Economic Intelligence Unit up 5.2%. Morgan Stanley up 5.4%. Goldman Sachs up to 5.2%. PwC up to between 5 and 6%. All of them cited the faster pace of the reopening and continued stimulus measures in the conference report. The last group are the usually very conservative Chinese economists who are predicting a major turnaround. Quote, the GDP growth rate will reach 8%, unquote, said Wei Zhangguo, vice chairman of the China Center for International Economic Exchange and former vice minister of the Ministry of Commerce. These sentiments were echoed by Jia Kang, former director of the China Academy of Fiscal Sciences, and Yao Yang, dean of the National School of Development at Peking University at a Global Times annual conference that was held on December 17th. So why the different forecasts? For the World Bank, IMF, and ADB, they see the past and the potential problems. Worsening U.S.-China relations, U.S. containment efforts like the October Biden administration export controls, banning Chinese companies from buying advanced chips and chip making equipment without a license, the restrictions of some U.S. citizens or green card holders to be involved in the development or production of chips at certain manufacturing facilities in China. The Economist Intelligence Unit, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and PwC, they see the present. The change in COVID policies and the conference report policy indicators. The Chinese economists see the future. An opportunity to implement the conference report and get China back on track with its dual circulation strategy where domestic consumption and manufacturing efficiency drive the economy and attracts outside investment. Who will be right? Only time will tell. But those who look forward tend to accomplish more than those who look at the past or the present.